Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dobbin R Radio. It's 18 12 06 02 2022. It's Karen Expression Sunday here on Dobbin R Radio. Always amazing to have you on the show. We have an amazing guest on the show this evening. I am super excited to have her on the show. Um, I've been looking forward to this day, uh, this date, uh, once we confirm uh, that she was coming on as well, because, you know, she's an amazing individual, uh, been in the media space for quite a while. But I'm sure you're eager to find out who she is as well, because, as you know, Dobbin Knight is always excited when he has amazing guests on the show. How are you? Hope you're having a great weekend and welcome to Dobbin Eye Radio. I'm good. Hello, everyone. Fantastic. How are you? I'm very well. I'm super excited. You know what? Anyway, anytime anyone asks me how I'm doing, I can't answer the question just to say I'm fine. I have to say I'm ecstatic. I'm amazingly happy and very joyous to have you on the show this evening. But I'm sure my ladies... Okay, are... maybe I have to borrow some words from you. I am beautiful. I am amazing. I'm excited. Uh, amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I told you, ladies and gentlemen, she is amazing. She is wonderful. <laughs> I'm so glad to have her on the show. But I'm sure my listeners are wondering, who is this lovely lady who the, with, the, with the angelic voice, so confident and bubbly this evening? Can you tell us what's your name? Uh, please, let's know. My name is Yetunde Oduwale. People call me Boss Line. Wow. Um, I am a media consultant. I am an event planner. I'm a branding guru, so they say. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm an event marketer as well. Fant so, fantastic. Um, that's all I do for now. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the one that only Yetino Odunwale, the CEO of Boss Line Media as well. I mean, she's very she's very modest in describing what she does as well. But I'm going to give her a bit of, you know, a, a, a bit of meat to it as well. She's amazing. She's been in the media industry for over 20 years, doing amazing things, uh, in entertainment, lifestyle. You know, she was one of the first individuals that went on to write about, you know, topics people shy away from and she put her face to it as well she was very confident in doing that she's also an actress and so you know in, in in various things she's also an individual who writes scripts amazing scripts for movies and soap operas as well i mean she's doing it she's doing amazing things. and it's also she does things around charity as well i, I mean that, i could go on and on but you know what possibly another day we're going to have you back because i think if we go back 20 years in time you're Mm, thank you you're most welcome you're most welcome but i mean the question <laughs> that, that always came to mind you know when i talk when i actually read about you or you know come across your name anywhere is the boss line i mean i love that name but can you tell us what, how did you come about that name how did that name you know even occur how did you put it together um it all began with my journalism journey i i had one editor that gave me an assignment to create a column, a feminine column. And I came up with so many names and um, he chose bus line. <laughs> oh, wow. So the name stuck right from, right from then. So people don't even call me by my first name anymore. They call me bus line because the column became a very widely accepted column yeah. in Nigeria in those days. And um, people started to call me bus line and up to date. And that column, I started writing it at the age of 18. Amazing. Amazing. And that was several, several years ago. I'm not going to tell you my age, but no. that was several years ago. <laughs> <laughs> several years ago. I, I think you, you can still pass for 30. I think we'll just leave it as that as well. But 18, I mean, that, that, that's quite amazing. That's, uh, that's quite amazing. Because a lot of people at that age uh, would probably want to be, you know, having makeup lessons and maybe, you know, looking for boyfriends here and there. But this is you, you know what, you know, you followed your passion and, you know, you went mm -hmm. in and, and did it. And I think that's quite remarkable and very inspiring uh, as well. That's quite good. Okay, so, I mean, Thank you. I know we're here to talk about your amazing book, you know, your amazing book, uh, Single Motherhood, The Success Manual. I'm excited to talk about that as well. I want to know more about it. And uh, I'm intrigued, you know, in, 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 in the book, but... I also wanted to touch on great things you, you're doing and you've, you know, continually doing as well within the society and in the world as a whole. I mean, I want to talk about a, a bit about your Diamond Recognition Award, uh, which you created in 2011. What, what inspired that? Um, I've always been um, someone that is not static. I like to diversify a lot. So when I rested from being an active journalist, yeah. I just... Um, was saying to myself, what next? What could I do to sustain um, my passion? Yeah. So, uh, so I, I am known for celebrating people, 
because um, even while I was um, into journalism, I was always interviewing people and um, celebrating them. So I, I just felt, okay, let me go on with celebrating people and um, how about recognizing people who are doing charitable work in the community and they are never recognized, you know. So that was how I came about Diamond Special Recognition Awards because I reckon these people are diamonds yes. who are not recognized um, for what they do in the community. And um, so I started to celebrate them in 2011. Amazing. And um, in 2012, I decided to go global with the project because I reckon if I stay put in one country, I'll just be recycling people. Yeah. So yeah. I reckon, oh, you've got a passport to the world, so why can't you go worldwide to do this? And um, I took it upon myself and I decided to travel with the project. And um, the first uh, place we went to in 2012 was Nigeria, my home country. Amazing, amazing. That that's quite remarkable. 2011, and you're still doing it consistently, uh, opting that, and you just yeah. you, and you still done it as well during the pandemic. The pandemic never held you back. You just I did, yes. and and tell you what, the pandemic edition was my most exciting edition because it was so star studded. There was uh, the likes of Davido was there, Don Jazzy was there. You know, a lot of people came. Uh, Chief Dede Mamadu Ovation Magazine was there. And, you know, it was really, really exciting for me. It was a Zoom edition. It was a pandemic edition. But for that year, it was rated one of the most star-studded Zoom um, events of that year. Amazing. Just shows how innovative you can be. You know, uh, I, I, I'm looking at you and getting inspired uh, about what you do and also the consistency uh, you put it into your hard work as well. I think that's quite amazing. So now, you know, with all Thank that, you. with all that greatness, you know, within yourself, with all that, you know, amount of, you know, you mentioned some big names there as well. And with all the hard work you do, you still have the time to kind of look back into the society and get back again into the, you know, in society, mm -hmm. into ordinary women. And, and, and ladies out there, even young girls as well, to make them understand, you know, life is not over if you find yourself in some certain situations. You know, which just brings us back to the uh, amazing topic of today, which is the single motherhood, the success manual. What actually inspired you uh, to write that book? Uh, I've been a single mom almost all my life. <laughs> <laughs> I raised um, two young men who are doing well. Yeah. And um, I reckon, why don't I give back? Because I'm always giving back. Mm. Um, I've got loads of experiences as a single mom. And um, no matter what I went through for those years, I stood on top of my game. Mm. Um, I had a lot of, um, a lot of low moments. Yeah. But I conquered them. I conquered everything. So it wasn't by my power alone, though. It was by the grace of God. So uh, I just reckon, why don't I empower other single mothers with my experiences? Amazing. Why don't I train them and teach them and give them hope, encourage them? And um, that was how I came about to, I mean, writing the book. It's, it's supposed to be a manual, mm. like, for single mothers who are struggling because I tell you, being a single mother is a struggle. Amazing. So if I had this kind of book when I was struggling as a single mother, it would have been easier for me. Mm. So learning the ropes from another woman who has gone through what I've probably gone through would have been a relief for me. Yeah. So um, I did not put tongue in cheek to mm. write this. I is the truth, Amazing. absolute truth, not nothing but the truth. Um, I've shared a part of my life that people consider to be sensitive. Um, some even um, said to me that, oh, you shouldn't have shared this part. You should have just written this part. And knowing me, I am a very, um, how do I um, qualify myself now? I'm a very truthful person, um, honest way. To fall, yeah, and uh, if I have to hit the nail, he has to be on the head. Amazing. So uh, you don't so you don't hold was, back any punches; um, you just go for a straight I, into I, it. I do not, as a matter of fact. 
So that was how I wrote the book. I mean, and uh, so far, so good. It's been encouraging a lot of women around the globe. I mean, I would say, I would say it has been because uh, you know we come across loads of uh, testimonials, loads of uh, individuals sharing uh, their experiences reading the book, which we'll come to um, during the course of the show. But I mean, I wanted to just go back mm-hmm. a, a step. You know, which I think you, you mentioned something really, really powerful. A couple of things really powerful there. Firstly, you mentioned that you know this is. Uh, laid bare this is no you know this is you you're not trying to uh, mince your words you, you're honest about the whole thing as well and also you also admitted that you know it, it's been a challenge um, you know being uh you know a single mother that which a lot of people experience as well but i mean i want to know how were the early years of being a single mother and how did you take charge you say you know what i am boss line media i am taking charge i'm putting my best foot forward mm-hmm. it didn't call me one day it was just um, one step at a time. Uh, there were times I was really depressed. There were times I wasn't speaking to no one, not even my family members. Mm. My, I was um, just um, in my world with my kids. Um, but one thing you couldn't take away from me in those days uh, was the fact that I was the mother hen of my kids. I, I didn't let any, anything... Um, no matter what I was dealing with then, I didn't let it affect my kids. Yeah. Uh, it was it was um, a period that um, was really difficult for me. Mm. Um, I had a business with my ex-husband, and he went away with all of that. Wow. And um, I was left with nothing than mm. to uh, thank God for the UK government that you can go back to and say that, oh, okay, this is my situation. Yeah. And they give you income support, even though it's um, uh, peanuts, but then at yeah. least you've got something to feed yourself and your kids with. So that was what I did. Yeah. And um, I I wallowed in a lot of um, self-pity, mm. a lot of depression. I was comfort eating. I ballooned. I, <laughs> I was the ugliest I've ever been in my life. But one day I just um, picked up the pieces of myself and said, you know what, isn't there? you've got a lot to give the world. You've got a lot to give your kids. You've got a lot to give yourself. So why can't you just stand up and be someone? Mm. You know, because I reckon if I continued to be, um, to wallow in those um self-pity and um, depression and that kind of thing, I would just lose my life. I might just lose my life mm. in the course of that. And um, that would be unfair yeah. on my kids. Yeah. So I decided to start um, taking the walk step by step. Amazing. I forgot about all the degrees I had ever gotten way back in Africa. I started from the scratch. I started from the college. And um, I started to pick myself up bits and pieces from the college. I moved on to the university. I had degrees before, mind you. Yeah. So I was just trying to refresh. I was just trying to, like, start afresh. That's the word. And um, God came to my rescue, and um, I was able to lift myself up. I was able to go back. That going back to school really did something for me. Because that was when I um, I was able to like mix up with people, yeah. and um, I was able to pick up myself back again. Amazing, amazing! I I think that's such an inspiring story as well. I mean, you know, if you haven't got the book, I don't think you know. I don't know what you're waiting for because I'm gonna we're gonna go into because there's, there's some mm-hmm. great testimonies I want to share as well uh, th- as we go through this as well. I, I felt I feel like I should even get the book and and read it as well because you know it's not just for single mothers. It's very inspiring uh, to 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 actually hear you say that as well. I'm being honest about how you went through all these uh, challenges. You know, I, you know when we posted up your uh, you know the flyer for the for the show, we we had some mm. uh, ladies contact us and 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 say, wow, you know they're looking forward to this as well. So we had brief conversations, um, you know, around you know wh- why why they so um, looking forward to this show, and some of the responses okay. like they they needed to hear um, from individuals who had been you know gone past or had this experience and how they came out of it because. They are in that, you know, in that state now, and sometimes it can be very difficult, um, you know, mm-hmm. for them to actually take charge as you as you have, 
and, and take that initial mm. step of, of becoming a better person and offering more to the society. I mean, from your perspective, mm. you know, what do you think single mothers need most to actually take that charge or take that initial step to say, you know what, I want to make a change? Mm. Well, I, I think um, above all, you need God. Mm. Because, um, forgive me, I'm a very spiritual person. It, it, it's fine. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so we love God I, too. We I, love God. We, we you know, <laughs> love God is the, the all, almighty God, yes. <laughs> So I take God with me every step of the way, and that is what every single mother should do. Because when everyone is like uh, turning their back to you, you have God there for you all the way. Mm. So um, you need people as well. I know that um, depression could make you be by yourself and um, shy away from people, you know. But at some point, you know, you know that you need people. Like, for instance, when I started to um, come out of my shell of depression, I needed people around me. I needed people to give me um, some sort of new lease of life. And that was when I enrolled in college, just to meet people, meet new people, and um, probably change my, um, the atmosphere of that depression and um, bring me back to another life entirely. And that was what I did for myself. And um, that is what you should do as well if you are a single mother struggling to um, get out of depression, get out of your that cocoon that you have put yourself in. You need people. You need people. Because a lot of people always say that they would rather be by themselves. Mm. They don't trust anyone anymore. Yes. They don't want to mingle anymore. But I tell you, there will be a, a stage in life that you would filter the people in your life. Yeah. But at that stage of you getting out of depression and, you know, owning yourself, you've got to, like, mix and mingle with people. Amazing. Because mm, um, in Africa, they will say people are the fabric of your well-being. Mm, mm. So, um, so you, you've got to be with people. You've got to be around people for you. That's the first step to take. You might filter later, but then you need people at that initial stage. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think that's quite um, important. You, and I will agree with you because you need to break out of that cocoon. You need to uh, come out of that uh, self-pity and engage with like-minded people who can point you in the right direction uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And also you talk about filtering. I think that's quite important as well. Uh, filtering those people mm -hmm. out as you, you know, get back into your normal I don't actually know. Exactly. Apologies. I don't use the word normal. Um, into your uh, <laughs> uh, heightened, better state. Uh, I I think mm. you know. Um, I think that mm. you filter people out. I mean, during the conversations as well. You know, with you know, couple of um, you know, single mothers. You know, we've had a conversation with just to get a feel uh, around this. You know, preparing for this interview is you know there's some questions single mothers ask themselves. Uh, questions of uh, you know doubt. Um, can I do this? Um, you know, this is so hard for me. You know, sometimes they put all this this um, brave face for the for the you know outside world, but when they get indoors, mm -hmm. it's 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 very challenging for them. You know, I mean, what would you say to individuals who are having uh, you know a sense of self doubt and thinking to themselves, "Can I do this by myself? How am I going to do this? Should I just give up? What should I do next?" Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Mm. Don't give up. I know it's easier said than done, but do not give up on yourself. That's why you have this kind of book to read. And um, that is why I want to spread the messages um, that I've written in this book around the world. I don't want to um, keep it silent. I want to make a lot of noise about this book. Mm. Just that I would reach out to someone that is in there doubting herself and saying, should I step out or should I just stay in this? Should I um, open up or should I just keep silent? So this is um, the mission of this book. Amazing. So that um, this, um, this um, particular set of people would, you know, see themselves in this book and see their situations in this book. And um, this is um, like giving them a new lease of life through this book. So I would say, do not give up. 
do not give up. There is a lot that you have, to, I mean, you still have to accomplish by yourself. There's a lot that the society needs you for. There's a lot that you can give to the society. So like I was, I was joking with someone, um, I said, well, it's not even a joke. This is um, a fact. There will be a time that, go and write it down, nine nine. there will be a time that a single mother would be president in one of these countries in the world because we are leaders. God has chosen us to be leaders because God has seen your strength. I believe God has seen your strength. That is why God has uh, entrusted children in your care, mm. single-handedly, because I believe God would not give um, just anyone kids yeah. to take care of single-handedly. God has seen your inner strength. God has, even if you don't see it, God has seen it. And um, God has entrusted these kids in your care. So you should be strong for them. Amazing. You should be strong for them at, at every point in time. The moment that you start uh, being um, low on strength, you are not doing um, justice to the mission. So Amazing. you have to keep the mission alive. Amazing. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I would say this. From my perspective, I, you know, anyone else can have their own comments or their own, you know, thoughts on this. But I think um, you're a very selfless individual. You could have written other books mm. because you're in the media um, industry. Media is all, about, is all about glitz and glam. You know, you could have read, written mm -hmm. a sensational book about some sexual desires or some, you know, how you do this, how you do that. But you chose to give back to society. I think that should be applauded um, from my perspective. I think it should be really applauded. And I feel the realness. I feel the honesty in how you answer this question. And also, it's, it's actually... Um, made me more interested in knowing more because me we as men we can be desensitized or not even pay attention uh, to what we see or what we see around women we want to talk about the impacts of society as well uh, just before the end of the show but i want to go back to the book you know uh, you know it, it's an amazing book you know so from your book mm. what, what is your favorite chapter of the book uh, i know you're going to ask me that <laughs> <laughs> And that's so, so difficult to say because I am the writer. So every chapter means a lot to me because I have put my all in the chapter. But um, I'm going to go by uh, what people uh, voted for. And um, a lot of people who have read this book, they decided that um, chapter three has to be their favorite chapter. Chapter three. And chapter three is cutting the tag. Hmm. Caught in the tag. Caught in the, caught in the tag. And um, I had to read chapter three all over again. And I felt, oh my God, this chapter is so powerful because it's the starting point to me. Because you, you, the moment you announce yourself to the world that you are, you have become a single mother, you've left a marriage or you've left a man, and now you have become a single mother and you have kids to take care of. Um, you've got to cut the tag. Okay? So that means you're cutting the tag. You're, like, cutting the tag of, okay, people have known me to be married mm. before, a married woman before. People have known me to be with a man before. Okay, right now, I'm moving forward in life. I have become a single mother. I am no longer married. I have caught that tag. I am now a new person and accept me the way I am. Amazing. So it has some boldness attached to it. Yeah. Because you can't cut off all those tags without being bold. So that this is um, a kind of chapter to encourage um, new single mothers to say, you know what? Cut the tag. Cut Move the tag. on with your life. Amazing. I mean, I mean, Move on with your life. I, I, lo I love the, mm. I love that chapter um, because it deals with what we see within society, especially within the African Caribbean society or African society, I should say, where there's a bit of a stigmatization mm. on single mothers. You know, uh, you know, the, the blame is mostly on them that you know it, it was them that that caused this. You know, it was you know the, they're the reason why a house is broken because that's a, that's the way that, 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 that you know uh, the society thinks. Um, you know, and it's yeah, not, you know. It's me. Nine, nine. Let me tell you something, right? Um, 
you've got to like, um, this is the narrative I have to change, okay? So a lot of people think, oh, you are a single mother, especially in Africa. There's this stigma, like you said, about being a single mother. They'll be like, oh, you don't want to be with a husband. You don't want to uh, be ruled by a husband. Mm. You want to gain your freedom. You want to sleep around. You want to hop in beds and stuff like that. You're a prostitute, you know. But I want to change the narrative through this book that we all became single mothers differently. Mm differently like when um i was doing publicity for this book the first time i declared to people that oh i've written a new book a man actually attacked me and said to me that oh have you written this book to encourage single motherhood so you want people to be like you to mm. be single mothers mm. like you so what are you trying to get at so i had to go to the dm of this person and say sir can you give me your number i need to call you so he did, and there were some things I, you know, I I showed him. There were some things I said to him that, see, I need to, like, um, change your horizon about this. See, we all became single mothers differently. Some by choice, and I'm not going to blame them for that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Because if you have been in a marriage where um, you've been violated, you know, domestic abuse, you know, um, domestic uh, violence and um, you decided one day that okay I'm going to leave this marriage it is by your choice you know nobody's going to like uh, say oh why didn't you stay put there I know they say that in Africa that you mm. have to patch your marriage you have to stay put there but then if you walk out I give you kudos it is by choice you've mm. got to leave okay some became single mothers through the death of their spouses yeah yeah. Okay, so what category would you put them? They are single mothers. Mm. Okay. And they, they so they didn't ask to become single mothers. You know, they've lost their husband. So they are now single mothers taking care of the kids alone. Yes. Okay. And I'll tell you what, um last year when I I unveiled this book in Nigeria, there was a a public figure that unveiled this book and during his speech he was giving a speech and was like, See, I am a married man but my wife is a single mother. Wow. So a lot of people were like, how can you be married and your wife will be a single mother? So look at me. I've been out of the country my wife lives in for like 10 years. I've been here struggling and um, doing politics and, um, you know, um, finding my own path in life. But my wife has been back home taking care of the kids. I don't even know what school the kids go to. Wow. <laughs> so that means the wife you could be a single mother and still be married amazing amazing you know i just learned so, something today yeah so that, that there are a lot of things attached to being a single mom so it doesn't have to be um waywardness you don't want to be with a man or you're a prostitute like they label us in africa you know they almost treat us like outcasts mm. in africa mm. but you will look deeper into what single motherhood actually stands for. There are loads of married women today that are single mothers because they take care of the home front alone. There was a point that my mother was a single mother Amazing. because if she wasn't married. She was married quite all right, but my dad was never there. She was the one taking care of the home front because my dad was always moving from one job to the other all over the state, and we couldn't have been traveling with him. Yeah. So my mom was a single mother, handling everything. So there are so many things attached to being a single mom that the world needs to know. Exactly, exactly. So, and that's my mission with this book. Amazing, amazing. The, 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 you know, I, I am learning so much myself this evening. You know, the book, Single Motherhood, <laughs> The Success Manual. You know, I mean, I want to talk about other chapters as well, you know, because this this chapter speak, speak to us as well, speak to individuals as well. It speaks to men. You know, we talk about, you mentioned that one of your favorite chapters is chapter three, uh, Cotton the Tag. Then we go into chapter four, mm -hmm. which says the world will adjust, you know, mm -hmm. saying, which is now what we just kind of explained around the stigmatization of the society where people think, oh, yes, once you're a single mother, you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that. And I think it's quite important that, yes, 
you know, the narrative change uh, or changes as you, as you rightly mentioned. But one of the chapters that actually stood out, um, I say, is, is chapter six, uh, which talks about depression. I think this is not talked about enough uh, in the society, especially uh, within our society as well. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a, it's a huge killer uh, as well. I mean, as a single mother yourself, you know, you mentioned this book, um, you know, it's, it's your honest self. It's you, you learn yourself there, not holding any punches back. When you were in, this, in mm. the state of, you know, dealing with a bit of depression, how did you manage that and how did you overcome that? Hmm. That's, um, uh, that is, um, how do I say it now for you to understand? It, it, it depends on the individual hmm. because we are, we all have different battles, you know, we all have different strengths. Um, I might say I am, um, I've got strength, I'm strong, but how about the next person? The next person might not be as strong as I am. So we all manage depression in different ways. Um, we've lost so many sisters mm. to depression. A lot of um, women have killed themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, there was this case of one woman in the United Kingdom in London yeah. that killed herself and was not discovered until many months after. Wow you know, as a result of depression. So that kind of person and uh, the society that we live in here doesn't even help us. Yeah. You know, back home in Africa, when your neighbor doesn't see you for like one or two days, they will come knocking. Exactly, yes. On your door and say, oh, how are you? Are you okay? Why haven't we seen you? You know, things like that should be encouraged in this society. You know, we tend to live by ourselves, we tend to keep to ourselves, which is um, <laughs> it's not it's not right it's when not. it comes to managing managing depression. Yeah. So I've been in this kind of circumstance where I will be in my flat for weeks without taking my bath. Wow. You know, I'll just take my kids to school and come back. I wouldn't brush my teeth. I wouldn't dress up. I wouldn't do nothing. So. Even my health, I wasn't taking care of my health. So what if I die mm. in that in that kind of uh, situation? So we should be our brother's keeper. Yes. We should be our sister's keeper as well. So the society should, you know, uh, be um, a fabric to our survival. Amazing. Especially people like us who do not have husbands, who uh, do it all by ourselves. You know, your neighbor should check on you. I think there should be um, some kind of movement for that. I, I you know, you started a movement. You started a movement. <laughs> yes. you check, are, you are... check on your neighbor movement. You know, <laughs> yes. Because I tell you that a lot going going on in the yes, yes. a lot, there a is, lot. There is people a lot. cry themselves to sleep. People do not have money to eat. Hmm. People are wallowing in a lot of things by the day, by the second, you know. So, and these, there are kids involved in this. Hmm. So what if uh, you, it wouldn't even look nice raising a kid with so much sadness, with so much depression. So what kind of kids are you trying to raise when you are not happy yourself? Hmm. You know, yeah. so uh, <laughs> My brother, there are a lot, a lot, a lot I to can, be said about that. I and can hear, um, I can hear it. <sighs> yeah. I can hear it. So I mean, I, I'm sure we, 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 even if we have uh, a whole day, we won't be able to, like, talk enough amazing. about all these things. Amazing. I mean, the book says it all. The book says it all. You know, Single Motherhood, The Success Manual. I mean, you've heard it from the amazing, uh, you know, Yeetende uh, Oduwale this evening, CEO of Boss Line Media. I mean, I, I, I'm touched as well. And also, I've spoken to quite a number of uh, single mothers uh, just before the show. I mean, you know, and, and they've expressed, you know, how happy they are uh, about this book as well, about, you know, someone who's taken mantle of sharing our own story and also, you know, being honest about it, you know, where they can go back and say, you know what, 
she's done it i can do it as well i think it's quite amazing i understand you know we're going to be having a a book tour you're going to be having a book tour um kicking off in london yes it's kicking off on the 11th of february that's next friday okay and so it's not going to be your usual book signing i decided to do a book tour instead because um there's so much messages that i need to um spread around the world yeah so I'm going to do major cities in the UK first before I know, uh, go out of the country to spread the news. Amazing. Um, to spread the word, rather. And um, I've also started a movement for single mothers, which is called Single Mothers Central. So um, right now we have a WhatsApp group which um, consists of about 50 people. Okay. Right now, we, I only started it like uh, two weeks ago. So we have uh, different um, single mothers from around the world in this group. And the mission is to teach them how to be brave and bold and um, how to, um, you know, own themselves and um, present themselves, reintroduce themselves back to the public and um, how to find love, um, how to... Um, make the most of yourself, like your skills, your talent. And, um, you know, there are a lot of single mothers out there that are not even, um, they don't even have money to feed themselves, let alone their kids. Yeah. So yeah. we want to um, create jobs, you know, avenues to create jobs for them. And uh, already I have a matron and a patron for that movement. Amazing. And um, they are willing to support us every step of the way. Because I might say, okay, I've got everything going on for me. How about the next person? So we need to like come together as a strong force to uh, give to one another. And, um, you know, so um, that's the movement I'm, I'm trying to put together at the moment. Amazing. And if you want to be part of the movement, you just reach out to her by DM uh, as well, I'm sure. And, you know, send send your interest as well. Again, you know, I commend you. Um, I am, you know, I applaud you um, in taking Thank the you. initiative in doing this because it just shows, you know, you, your selflessness again, go, give it back to society because it's very easy for you to say, you know what, I'm all right now. You know, why should I care about anyone else? But no, you're doing that to mm. build a better society, to give the generation... Mm. Uh, yet unborn uh, the opportunity to not even experience or go through any form of depression because depression is real um i know people uh who are, who are depressed mm -hmm. who are on medication as well it's not it's not easy thing you know it's not easy i thing know at all. uh and, and it's it's lovely to have you as an individual uh, doing this i mean the, the book you know the, the, the single you. motherhood um uh, the success manual is available on uh, amazon as well anyone there listen to us you say wow amazon I... worldwide amazon yeah. worldwide just go on there quickly order it as well you can't go wrong with this book it's an amazing it does amazing read as well different things that would make you th you know it's not it's not all about you know sads and sorrow things uh she did some naughty things there as well i mean are there any hidden uh, uh you know naughty parts you don't have to say which which chapter it is but are there any hidden <laughs> He didn't know he things in that book that you know that that would get the blood flowing for anyone who, who is who wants to read it. See, the, everybody that knows me, they know that I'm a very uh, sincere person. I I say the way it is. Okay, um, I encourage people to masturbate. Like, if you want to, why not? Okay. And I know some religious bodies might frown at this and say, oh, masturbation is a sin. But then I, I think the only judge is God. Mm. Let God be the judge of anything. <laughs> okay. So, so, see, when I was um, trying to, um, because when I, all through the years that I was a single mother and uh, bringing my kids up, sex was lasting on my mind. Okay. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was, like you know neck deep into bringing up my kids mm. so when the kids started to grow i started to like uh, find myself back again i started to see myself the feminine side of myself mm. and um i i well when uh, you start to crave for sex and there's no man there to give it to you or you don't 
trust any man anymore. Mm. You know, the only way out is, you know, to do it by yourself. Yeah. And that's when masturbation comes in. So I don't know um, who labeled masturbation as sin. Maybe our Christian sisters. <laughs> but I did it. Fantastic. I, I did it. And I found my joy in it. And I think it's better than me hopping in bed. I, I, okay. I, okay. So, <laughs> so uh, that's um, taking me back to the workshops that we want to create with okay. this book. Okay. Okay. There will be a time that I would um, invite speakers to speak because every chapter of this book is a workshop. Okay. So there will be speakers speaking about certain topics, especially the ones that we don't talk about, like the one I just mentioned now. Yeah. So. Speakers are going to organize workshops for women to speak out and say, you know what, you need to find yourself, even sexually. Okay? So the moment that you, you this thing come in stages. See, this, um, there's what they call sex confidence. Mm. Okay? So when, I'm when you move out I'm learning of, as well. <laughs> you know, I'm taking notes. <laughs> When you move out of a marriage, when um, your marriage has you know, packed up and you don't trust any man anymore, you know, everything about you becomes, I mean, they, they go under. Go under in the sense that, okay, you don't want to be with any man anymore. You don't want to have anything to do with sex anymore. And, but believe me, there will be a time when the urge will come. No woman, no woman is is uh, dead sexually. Yeah. yeah. There'll be there'll be a time that the urge will come that you would want a cuddle, that you would want to be with a man. So thank God for sex toys. Right. Okay. I I, I think so, I hear I hear a, a boss line media <laughs> range coming soon <laughs> on, on this one because she's so innovative as well. I hear a boss line media range coming. But anyway, carry on, please. <clears throat> <laughs> so, I recommend it to any woman, you know, explore your body first in your mission. I mean, your your mission to, because there'll be a time that you, you find love. You can't run away from love. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can't say because a man has left you, so you are not going to move on with your life and find another man. Okay. But then... Before all of that, you need to, like, discover yourself, mm. build your sex confidence, okay? Because the only time you can enjoy sex is when you know your body. Mm. So how do you know your body if you don't explore your body? It's your body. You've got to explore it, you know? So I encourage every woman, not even um, single mothers alone, you know, to explore their own body through sex toys. Amen. No comment. <laughs> no comment from number nine this evening. I think this is the only time I've been tongue-tied live on air that I can't even respond or comment on this one because Boss Lan has taken over the show as always on this uh, this evening. But, but anyway, you know, you know, get the book. You know, if you, if you read the book, then maybe you can understand exactly where she's coming from. On this one, the book again is Single Motherhood, the Success Manual. She could, you could have success in always, you know, that's what she's saying now. In every way, you know, success is available <laughs> for you. And it's available. So I'm appealing to people, I'm appealing to people to support the movement. Yes. Because yes. we're going to be doing a lot of workshops and we need funding. Okay. To kickstart this. Amazing. Okay. So uh, we're going to open a GoFundMe account. Yes. Where anyone, that has the passion to uh, support single mothers worldwide because there are loads of single mothers in Africa, especially yes, suffering, yes, yes. you know, to raise their kids. There are loads of kids from single uh, parents, you know, uh, who don't go to school, yeah, you know, yeah. so uh, who can barely feed themselves. 
so where I can't do it alone. Yeah. I am not rich. I wish I am a rich person, but unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not rich yet. <coughs> yeah. So um, I'm just um, appealing to people from the world over yeah. to please support us because we're going to be going from country to country and this things they need funding yeah. and um we're going to appeal to the government as well we're going to like um um access some funds if they are available to us fine but uh, this thing is 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 um towards um uh, a better society a society whereby everyone has a job everyone can feed themselves irrespective of their situations or their status in life even if you're a married woman, you're a single mother, you're a single father, we want everybody to be able to feed themselves and their kids. No kids should be without education. 100%. No kids should be without food. So that is the mission. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, I've had such an amazing time with you on the show uh, this evening. But before we let you go... Thank you so much. You know, I, I, we want to know something. We want to know... Tell us a fun fact about you that no one knows exclusively live on Dovin Iron Radio. A fun fact by the CEO of You want me to bear everything on this program? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, want me, no. you want me to bear everything? There's nothing everybody... I mean, there's nothing um, uh, nobody knows about me. A fun fact. Okay. Everyone knows it. Okay. A fun fact. Everybody knows everything about me. Like, I'm always um, a fun-loving person. People know that. Um... Yeah. Maybe the only thing people do not know is, um, uh, I don't know, like I'm open to, I'm open to another relationship. I'm open to, you know what, the fact that I've been a single mother all my life doesn't mean I don't want to get married again. Mm. Okay. 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 Fun so facts. in, in yeah. that, in that group, in that WhatsApp group that I opened for single mothers, there are married women there, okay? Married women in the sense that, okay, they've been, is it that they've been single mothers before and now they are married? Yeah. Or they are, they are married and they are still single mothers because they are the ones running the home front while the husbands are in another country. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah. So maybe that part of me, people do not know that I still want to get married. Amazing. That's part of the fact that <laughs> I've been heartbroken by way of marriage. Yeah. But yeah. then I'm still open to it. Amazing. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Amazing. I'm not knocking down marriage. I would never. That is a great institution. Okay. I'm still open to it. But even if I get married tomorrow, that would not stop me from this movement. Amazing. From, you know, doing things for single mothers because I've been that all my life. Amazing. Or rather, most of my life. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. She's, she's let it out there. You know, she's still open to get married as well. You know, uh, but she still <laughs> will be supported. You know, the single mothers, <laughs> as always. So, you know, I know the gentlemen out there, the uh, tenors will probably go up as well. But I tell you, it's not going to be an easy fit for you because this is Boss Line Media. We'll talk about, you know, she's fiery. She's engaging. She's very selfless as well, but she's amazing. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I've had such a good time on the show uh, with you this evening. Thank you for having me. I hope Thank I, I hope we can me. get you back to discuss more on on the movement as well. Because yeah, I, think, I think the movement is a great idea as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you remember yeah, the name of the book is Single Motherhood. The Success Manual, available on Amazon Worldwide as well. And also look out for the GoFundMe page. They'll be opening uh, quite soon as well to support this amazing movement. I think it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. This is what we need in a society where we look out for each other as well. I think the men, the need, you know, I think men need to do more as well for each other as well because men do go through a lot of depression, but they don't never speak about it. Mm -hmm, um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think, you know, it's wonderful that, you know, the internet has taken the, uh, the, the, the initiative to do this and support the women in society as well because, yes, women do go through a lot as well. Uh, I think it's amazing. Make sure you do support as well. Check out our Instagram page. And that's yet in a boss line on Instagram. Or, you know, if you're trying to find it, just go on this Double Nine Radio Instagram page, click on today's flyer, and you'll find our handle on there as well. Don't forget, Single Motherhood, the Success Manual. The book launch tour starts on uh, February, sorry, February the 11th, which is a Friday uh, next week. 
if you can be part a part of that, check out the um information on our handle as well. Yeah, know it's been amazing to have you on the show. Uh, I mean, I've had such an amazing time. I hope you have too. Thank you for having me. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Thank you.